Hey guys, it's Shaylin, and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm going to be talking about everything that I wrote in my writing degree. So I am the recent obtainer of an undergraduate degree in writing. I definitely want to make a series of videos talking about writing degrees, because there's a lot to talk about, but I wanted to start by just talking about everything that I wrote in my writing degree. So there are a few reasons why I want to make this video. The first one is to give an example of what your portfolio is like. like obviously, it's going to be different at every school. I always have to emphasize this. Every program is different. Every year of a program is different. The other reason I wanted to do this was just to kind of try to show my journey. The last reason why I wanted to do this, to be honest, is that I'm having a giant postgraduate existential crisis. Is talking about school probably just going to make me more emo? Uh, yeah, it's probably going to make me feel worse. I'm going to go through this by year. This is only the creative writing that I did in my degree. This isn't every single assignment. Things that I'm not including in this video are anything that was a group project, non-writing assignments in writing classes. So for example, I took a lot of writing classes where we would write a paper. I'm not going to cover writing assignments in non-writing classes. So there were a few times where like I was in a non-writing class, but we had a creative project. Very small assignments were in-class prompts. I had a lot of writing classes where we would do an in-class exercise every day or several exercises every day or there were just like very small one-off assignments lots of them first year I only had one writing course and it was intro to writing and it was an entire year long so it's weird to think back to first year like for the most part my degree like literally happened in the blink of an eye except for year one when I think back to first year I'm like that was a really long time ago <laughs> I started university in 2015 you know January to September of 2015 was it was not a good time was really exhausted I was really drained so when I started university um, I was living on campus in a dorm the building I lived in was a quiet building so everyone who lived in it wanted like a quieter space but as a result everyone on my floor including myself was really introverted as a building we didn't really bond and they were really nice people like the girls on my floor I actually still run into some of them sometimes and they're all super nice everyone on my floor kind of made their friend groups in their classes, but I didn't. <laughs> like I said, coming into first year, I was really burned out and I was really burned out socially. No one was making me leave my dorm to go talk to people. So I just stayed in my dorm and didn't talk to people. At the time, I was fine with that. I had made a few friends in my intro to writing class and then almost all of them dropped out of school. <laughs> Partly, maybe that contributed to why creatively it was a really hard year for me. So I only had five things that I did um, over the course of this year, we had in-class prompts and stuff, but every single one of them getting the idea was like dragging a boulder up a mountain. I had never experienced creative drought like this before. There had always just been an abundance of ideas. I was not anticipating to start this program and not be able to get an idea. In my mind, it was like, if there's one place that I should be thriving, it is in this writing class. And then now I can't do it. I don't know what it was. I've still never experienced something like this since then. Every single assignment, I couldn't get an idea. Eventually, obviously I would get, I would figure something out because I had to hand something in, but it was never something that I connected to. So it was very, very difficult to write. There was just nothing natural about it. So the first thing that we wrote was a poem. So mine was called Rectangles and Handprints. So this poem was like a description of different rooms the narrator had lived in. It wasn't very good. So the next thing that we wrote was a stage play. This stage play is monumental because it wins the award for the number one worst thing that I wrote in my degree. It was actually brutal. I could not get an idea for this. And I had never written a play before. I couldn't remember the last time I had seen a darn play. So the, th the thing I wrote after that was a fiction piece. You know, I had struggled with the poem. I had struggled with the stage play and I was like, okay, but it's fiction. This is my genre. Now I should be able to get an idea. Nope, no, no, <laughs> no. Still couldn't get an idea. The piece was called Pack of Gum. There are so many ways that I self-sabotaged with this because of overthinking. One, I wrote it in third person because I thought that that would be more like mature and that the people grading it would prefer third person over first person. This was not a conclusion I drew from anything I was told by a professor. I just felt that way. I really tried to have the arc of a full-on short story in like 1200 words. That kind of structure didn't really work in a piece 
this short that was essentially only one scene. Three, I was too scared to make anything interesting happen. I was almost like scared to be weird. I, I don't know why. I had this like fear when I was handing in all my assignments in first year. I was scared to do anything fun. I was scared to do anything outside the box. I felt like I had to play it safe. It was a boring story. It was just a conversation between two people. Nothing interesting happened. So that was that. It doesn't make the uh, the worst of list, but it was still pretty bad. Then we had screenwriting. So my screenplay was called She Rides Trains. This one comes in at number four on the list of worst things that I wrote during my degree. And it was basically just about a character who a lot of major life events have happened to her or family members on trains. And so like she spends a lot of free time just like training around. Running theme, this wasn't very good. I don't know what to say. It was just pretty bad. And then the last thing that I wrote was my creative nonfiction piece. This one easily takes the number two spot for worst thing I wrote in my degree. This might actually be the worst thing I wrote. Like, it's a tight race for number one, let me tell you. I really didn't understand creative nonfiction and what we were supposed to do. I was scared to take risks. I guess it was almost like this fear of people, of whoever was grading me, judging me? I don't know what they would be judging me for. When I talk about, like, how I look back at this time and I see how much I've matured, the main thing I can see is how anxious I was about literally everything. Then naming characters I would overthink like I didn't want to give like them names that were too weird because they might like think that I would I don't know what they would have like a certain impression of me why was I like this I don't know for my CNF piece I really didn't understand what I was meant to be doing and at one point one of the professors was like or you might just write a story about something funny or weird that happened to you since that option had been given to me it was really all I knew what to do so I decided to just write a story about this really weird thing that happened to me. It wasn't CNF, like there was no point to it. So it's definitely one of the worst things I wrote in my degree. Coming into year two, I was in the opposite place that I had been at the start of year one. At the start of year one, I was so pumped. Year two, my confidence was so low. So this would have been September of 2016. I was so scared that I would have a repeat of first year and not be able to get any ideas. Everything I wrote in first year, it didn't even feel like my writing. It's like it wasn't even in my own writing style. The way my program is, was structured was everyone takes writing 100. If you meet a certain grade bar, then you can move on to the next year. In the next year, you choose two genres. I picked fiction and screenwriting and I was nervous. I think I felt vulnerable because I had struggled so much in first year. Looking around, even though I didn't really know anyone, I would just feel like I was probably the worst writer in the class. So I'll start with screenwriting. I wrote three scripts in screen. We did do some like exercises, but I don't remember those. The first like real screenplay I wrote was called Clay. We wrote this in the first semester. It was like a 10 page screenplay. And then we did our first workshop as like a whole group. It was kind of complicated how the workshop was set up. I was definitely nervous because this was my first workshop. And also my confidence was in the freaking Marianas Trench. Screenplay was about a girl who's house sitting and she's a bit of an opportunist and she finds out that this garden gnome, the lady she's house sitting for, has on her front porch is actually like worth a lot of money. I did not hate this. Obviously it's not amazing and I've written many better things since then. The next two that I wrote were for second semester. So second semester we were broken into groups of 15 and we had like actual workshops. The first script that I wrote was called The Pine Heart. I believe this was 15 pages. This was still to this day probably one of my better scripts. Even though it was so long ago, it's probably my second best screenplay which just goes to show you that I really never improve that much when it comes to screenwriting. It was about two kids and the younger brother finds this like bundle of branches in the woods and he is convinced that it's like the egg of a tree. I think this screenplay was very like true to me. It's such a staple for my style as a writer and I didn't really know that it was such a staple for my style as a writer to write things that were leaning into folklore in some way. We had these ones workshop twice, so we wrote them, revised them, and then workshop them again, and then revised them again. The second script that I wrote also falls on my list of worst things I wrote in my degree. It falls in at number five. It's, it's far from the worst, but it's still pretty bad. And it's called Street Smart. It was originally called something completely different. I think it was called spray paint. Like it had a really bad title. I was in the first week of the rotation. It kind of hit me the week before reading break. Like the week after reading break, I had to submit a screenplay and I didn't have an idea. I had nothing and these ones were like 20 pages. So I went home over reading break and I just suffered, cried, wept, mourned, uh, prayed. 
begged to whatever God would listen to me, you name it. And eventually I did come up with a script and it was basically just about these two like graffiti artists who have a rivalry. I know that like Banksy and some other artist have like a rivalry or something and I thought that that was interesting and I thought that, that I could scale that down a lot. The draft that I handed in to workshop was so awful, I was so embarrassed to hand it in. And just the plot was ridiculous and it made no sense. I did end up revising it for the class and the revision is fine. Like it's not good, but I don't hate the revision. If the revision had been the first draft, it wouldn't be on the, the list of worst things they wrote. But that first draft was pretty bad. Then there was fiction. So I wrote four things for fiction. The first one was like a writing exercise. Basically the professor wanted us to write a piece with a lot of constraints that she gave us. Basically the idea, which I do believe this is true, but it's that when you're given constraints to write in, you really have to push yourself a lot further and you can end up learning a lot than if you just have absolutely no parameters. So she gave us some very specific parameters. We're building the stories around a WikiHow article. So she gave everyone a different WikiHow article. Mine was how to make a crop circle. And then we had like a specific situation, like we got the two characters and their ages and their relationship and a piece of backstory. And then we had other rules that we had to follow. Like there had to be a dog, I think in the scene, there had to be a song from like a certain year that was playing. We kind of worked with this over the full semester. So there were like multiple iterations of it. We wrote that first one and then she gave us another thing to add. She gave us like an archive and we had to look through and pick an object from the archive integrate that. I did mine of like a, it was like a bear skull. I definitely learned a lot from this assignment. Having to do that description, I remember writing it and I was like, I think I just learned how to write description. You know, that first version of it that I had handed in had been quite bad, but working with it over multiple iterations taught me so much about how to write description, taught me how to line edit. She gave us a lot of very specific line editing specs, like we had to cut all our to be verbs. We couldn't have this, we couldn't have that. Again, to make you push yourself force yourself to learn how to do it. I had my three short stories. I have talked about all of these, so I won't cover them that much. These were the three stories for the workshop portion of the class, which took place in that January semester of 2017. So my first story ever was called Melting Point. I've talked about Melting Point before. I have a series of videos of me rewriting it. You know, I had started working on this story, I think October or something. We had had to hand them in in December. I think this story got me my confidence back, not because the story was incredible, but I had an idea that I was actually passionate about. And when I was writing it, I was like, this sounds like me again. That story marked kind of the end of this idea drought that I had been in, which was awful. So then after that, my next story was called Dramatis Persona. Second year was pretty hard for fiction. Like we did have to write three stories, minimum 3,500 words. Like we were basically writing a story a month. They all had to be like really good high quality. I hear from people who go to other schools and they're like, yeah, I just like hand in my first drafts. I'm like, you hand in your first drafts? If I handed in my first draft, my professor would murder me and my family. Place a curse on like anyone from my bloodline for the rest of time. <laughs> you can't hand in a first draft where I'm from, folks. This story is about a young woman who's backpacking through Europe with her boyfriend and then she ends up getting dumped and then she ends up getting pickpocketed. My initial idea was just that I was about a character who was stuck at a hostel with like a bunch of really weird people. This story is a bit different tonally from my other work. My workshop reception for this was actually really strong. The story like played with form a lot. It was like a mix of a play and a fiction piece, even though like I don't know how to write plays as we've already established. I ended up revising it into something that I like. It's far from my strongest piece. I don't really submit it. Writing the first draft was really hard, but after I had written it, um, I was able to turn it into something I like. I had talked about it in first year, like I was so scared of what I handed in and I don't know why, I don't know where this came from, but partly Melting Point had set me free a little. Melting Point's a pretty messed up story. You guys know what it's about. I've talked about it before. It's just about a, a woman whose twin brother is a pyromaniac. It's about them burning down a house together. Handing that in was like, okay, I can write messed up stuff and like, it's fine. And then this story was like, I can like play with form. I can kind of do whatever I want and it's fine. And then my last story was called, at the time it was called Bird Behavior. It's now called Symbiosis. That story actually ended up getting public. At the time of writing it, like this was my piece de resistance. I would not even consider it anywhere near the best thing I wrote in my degree. It's probably one of my weakest stories at this point, but at the time it was my best story. It's about this man whose childhood best friend had gone missing and he sees her again one day and he's not sure if she's a hallucination or not. There's a lot of birds. There's a lot of bones. There's a lot of drugs. It's a whole thing. 
and it was great to write something that I had such zeal for, especially just thinking about like a year prior writing my fiction piece for Writing 100, where I had absolutely no passion for it. So now we're getting to year three. Third year was the wild year. This was the wackiest year of my degree. I had made a lot of friends in second year. And then in third year, the friend group grew and it was just like a kind of a wacky group of people. And I think we celebrated the fact that we were friends maybe a little too much. <laughs> so many weird things happened in third year. It's just strange. Third year was kind of like, the encapsulation of like what my degree was. I had year-round workshops. I also wasn't working, so I was just a full-time student. I had like a really great core social group, which is something that I had been really missing in like first year. So again, I'm gonna start with screenwriting. This was the last year that I took screenwriting. In third year, you don't need to take the two genres. I decided to take two just because I wanted, I would have rather take a screenwriting workshop than like a random elective. In third year screenwriting, you just do one project for the whole semester. So you have the choice of doing a short film, a web series, or a TV pilot. And I wanted to do a TV pilot, but I didn't really have an idea. <laughs> this screenplay that I'm about to talk about is the, that's right, number three worst thing that I wrote in my degree. I could not think of anything. And the professor for this class was horrible. I'm pretty sure something came up last minute and they had to scramble to find someone because he was a documentary filmmaker and he didn't know anything about screenwriting. It was a great group of workshoppers. The prof was just, he didn't know anything. He was just irrelevant. I should have done a short film. Did I write a TV pilot when you don't really know what you're doing with no long-term game plan? Don't do it. I ended up wanting to write the screenplay about like, basically these kids who grew up together on a commune, but then they all end up getting separated and then like years later, they're like trying to like, Reconnect, I don't know. I wanted it to be like darker and have like conspiracy theories, kind of almost like Orphan Black-esque. My first 10 pages of this were fine. A weird beginning that asked a lot of questions that I didn't have answers to. The people in the class didn't know that I didn't have answers. So it seems like I knew what I was doing. And I think at that point you could have trust in the writer to feel like this was going somewhere. It wasn't. And to feel like there was a plan in place, there wasn't. And to feel like there would be payoff for this setup there wouldn't be. The entire script that I handed in later on was, again, I was embarrassed to hand it in. This is the worst thing I ever handed in to a workshop. I have never been more embarrassed to hand something in because it was just so bad. And the class knew it was bad. The class didn't like it. The reception was not positive, which it shouldn't have been because the screenplay was awful. But like I said, this professor didn't know anything about anything. So he gave me 88 on the first draft. And I remember talking to a friend of mine in the class. She was like, I have never been so upset to get a good grade before. Like I'm actually angry because my screenplay is not that good and he gave me an A and I was like, I feel that. He gave me 88 on mine. If I were grading myself, I would give myself 63. And she was like, Shaylin, give yourself some credit. That screenplay is worth like at least 65. We had to do revisions also for this. I ended up doing my whole revision in one day. I had fiction revisions to do that semester and I put a lot of time and my own blood into those fiction revisions and I didn't really care about the screenwriting revisions because I didn't care about the script and I was never gonna do anything with it. So at the last minute I was like, well, I guess I have to do revisions and I was going to just kind of half-ass them. Eventually I sit down to do my revision and I realized that the only way to fix any of the feedback, none of which was even from him. Obviously the class gave me tons of feedback because every single thing about the script was bad and nothing made sense. And they were like, here are 80 million plot holes that I noticed. This was literally his feedback. It was like three sentences. Wow, this is really starting to come together as a TV pilot. I can kind of see where it's going. It was just basically three sentences of him stating the fact that it was a TV pilot. And I was like, I knew that. I wanna know what's wrong with it, bud. But all the feedback from my peers basically was like, clear that I couldn't change one thing, I would have to change everything. So I rewrote the entire thing, maybe three pages stayed in one day, and it was a mess. He gave me 96 on it. That's how much this professor didn't know anything about screenwriting because this had no structure, no logical consistency, no character development, no good dialogue, none of the things that would make a screenplay good, and he was like, have 96. I was like, are you kidding me? Anyways, my GPA thanks him for it, but it's just not deserved, you know? Like, like in other classes, like in fiction, you had to work so hard for that A, and then to just be handed 96 on something I did in like about 22 hours, I would feel happier about it if I had gotten a lower grade. 
that's how much I did deserve this grade. So then going into my second screenplay of third year, I almost dropped out of screenwriting actually because that last one had gone so badly and I was like, maybe this isn't for me. But I decided to just go like scope out the class and I actually went and I really liked the prof. It was her first time teaching, but she was just great. And it seemed like a really good group of people. And I was like, you know what, I think I should give this one more go. And initially I was writing this really bad web series, but I changed my idea. But I ended up adapting one of my old novels, Chain Reaction, into a TV show called Chaos Theory. And I've got an entire video where I talk about that experience. This one actually falls on my list of best things I wrote in my degree. Number five. There's a big gap between four and five on this list. It's not perfect. I had a really strong connection to the material and to the characters because, you know, it was from a novel that has been in my head for a long time. I just love this professor. Compared to the professor the previous semester who had given me literally three sentences that said nothing on an entire TV pilot, this professor, she gave me six pages on my full draft of like structural analysis on every single beat of my screenplay. That's just like above and beyond in my opinion. So now we'll get into fiction. This semester they had a 4,000 word minimum, no upper maximum. So the first one rolls in at the number two best thing that I wrote in my degree and it is my story Barefoot. This story is actually getting published soon in the winter edition of The Fiddlehead. It is going to be in issue number 282. I put a lot of work into the revision of this piece. Very difficult piece to write. It's set in Thailand. This is the kind of story where like every single sentence I had to stop to research something. In the same semester, I had that really bad screenplay that I got 96 on a revision I did in 22 hours. And then for this story, I spent like months painstakingly, you know, polishing every word and I got 95. I got a lower grade than I got on the freaking 22 hour pilot. The other story that I wrote this semester is called Kudzu Girls. I would bring Kudzu Girls in at the number four best thing that I wrote during my degree. I would put it at number three, but the one I put at number three has been published and this one hasn't been. Kudzu Girls is my most rejected story. Magazines hate her. This story is about a 12 year old girl who is in love with her best friend and it's kind of just like about the culmination of their toxic friendship and it's like in a greenhouse full of kudzu vines. My professor was like obsessed with it and then every magazine I submitted to is like I spit on this. I didn't love it when I was writing. Then I actually submitted it and like I got the best grade I'd ever gotten at that point on a first draft, 90 I think. I was able to really see my growth like okay grades are not worth everything to be clear. As we've been over with that pilot that I talked about, sometimes grades are meaningless. Because I had had the same professor for five stories straight in a row, so it was very easy to see like how you were improving. That first draft of Melting Point that I handed in, I think I got 67. Eight months later, I handed in Kudzu Girls and got 90. So it was like a very clear way for me to see how I'd improved. So then the next semester, first of all, I handed in a story that I didn't adore called Shwolf. I'm just gonna call it Shush Wolf. Written like shh, like that. I really liked this story while I was drafting it. After the workshop, I kind of just like never ended up going back to it. The story when I had handed it in was not fully realized. I actually haven't read it since I handed it in, which was in 2018. I think if I were to read it again, I might want to revisit it because it's very pretty. It's about a boy whose sister was like abducted by a wolf pack, but then they find her again. I didn't know that this was a trope, but like stories about like girls raised by wolves are a thing. I didn't know that this was like a genre. And so I think after I learned that, I felt like the story was maybe a lot less original than I thought it was. I've kind of forgotten about this story, to be honest. So then the last story that I wrote in third year is my number three best thing that I wrote in my degree. And it's I Will Never Tell You This. This story was published May of last year in the Puritans spring issue. You could check it out. The revisions were fairly minimal and then I submitted it and it was, accepted the second time I ever submitted it. And then the final thing I wrote in third year, it was a novel writing class, but like not a workshop, it was a lecture. And I wrote a novel beginning as like my main term project. So I ended up actually just taking my story symbiosis and expanding it to a novel. I think it was like the first 5,000 words of that novel. And that was third year, folks. Fourth year and third year kind of felt like the same year to me just because I lived in the same house. We had calmed down and also cut out the toxic people from our friend group. So I think fourth year was like 
much more chill. She only had one workshop. A huge step down from third year where I had four. My novel, Honey Vinegar, which I've talked about because it's my current work in progress. And Honey Vinegar is the number one best thing that I wrote during my degree. I think it's the number one best thing I wrote during my degree. It's not as polished because it's giant, but I'm putting it in that spot. It's funny because when I came into my program, all I wanted to do was write novels and I didn't really have an interest in short stories. And then I picked up this interest in short stories through my fiction classes. In previous years, they had had two fiction workshops, one in each semester, and one would be a novel workshop and one would be a short story. And I really wanted one more short fiction workshop, but then they're only offering one semester of fiction and it ends up being a novel workshop. I didn't really have a novel that I wanted to work on for the class. It ended up being the best thing because like, this is my current work in progress. Like I'm almost done the book. I was a keener, so I started working on this in September. Getting the idea definitely took a very conscious brainstorm, but once I had that idea, it took off and I'm now about 75,000 words into the manuscript and I have about four chapters left. Looking at it and even looking at like its style and its themes, it does kind of feel like the perfect encapsulation of like a writing journey. Like, you know on MasterChef when like, you know, contestants would be like, this is me on a plate. Honey vinegar is me on a plate. Um, I did take some electives. The first thing I did was in an adaptation class, we had to choose something and adapt it to another form. I chose the novel Vicious by, Vic by Victoria Schwab, since I always thought it would be such a fun movie. And then I also took a class on writing children's and young adult, where I worked on, I don't know, it ended up being about the opening 9,000 words of Someone Will Save You, plus a like pitch package, so a query letter and a summary. And then I took a course on writing short fiction. Hated this course, it was terrible. The professor knew nothing. This is the course where I learned that our course evaluation surveys actually have a character limit. So I wrote a short story called Solarium. And then the final thing that I wrote in fourth year was a, it was a TV pilot pitch package, I guess, where we had to like conceptualize a TV show. I guess it wasn't a pilot. We had to conceptualize like a TV franchise and make a bunch of pitching materials for it, including like a series and like season outline. Fifth year was like barely happened. It was just one semester of two classes. I was only in two classes and I was working full time at that point. And so it was like school was kind of just the thorn in my side. The first class was a poetry class and I wrote seven poems. I'm not gonna talk about them all. They ranged from a very bad sonnet to a pretty good glossa. And then the final thing that I wrote were just four scripts for a class that I took on writing horror and thriller. That's everything I wrote in my degree. I have no concise or insightful way to wrap up this video. You know, I said it's gonna make me more emo. It did sad and nostalgic now. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you next time. Bye.